with uh, Simon, we're going to turn our attention to Coventry City because uh, things have been moving and shaking overnight at Coventry City. Coventry owners Sisu Capital, controversial owners at that, have agreed to sell a majority stake to local businessman Doug King in a deal which will leave the club debt Free. Incidentally, just in the passing, you were this was genuine, right? You were you were interested in in, yeah. in the football yeah. club yourself. Yeah. I was interested in having a, a look at what the reality of it could be, whether I wanted to get involved, what I would do to get involved, and what it looked like as a deal. And what it looked like as a deal was hard work because there's so many different moving parts in it. There were the incumbent owners that I felt had a valuation that perhaps was a little kin with meeting their needs rather than the incoming purchasers. Right. But that's their privilege. Mm. And then the stadium and the construction of the deal around the stadium, and then Coventry Council perhaps wanting the stadium relocated, it becoming a bit of a property play. And I thought, this is hard yards for a football club. If it was Crystal Palace back in the day, then of course I'd have wanted to do it because of the emotional investment. This is a commercial transaction, so it has to be absolutely and emphatically right for me. Okay. I didn't think it was from, the, from the information that I gathered and garnered. Have you heard of Mr. Doug King? Uh, he's I, the chief executive of Stratford-upon-Avon based Yellow Enterprise. I have not. Okay. Um, they recently invested over 70 million quid in the region through the construction of a state-of-the-art oil seed processing yep. facility to generate renewable energy. Yep. So it would appear um, Mr. King knows what he's doing when it comes to investment. And this, it, it, it would look like, on the face of it, Simon, this could only be good news for, for Coventry City fans, you would hope. Well, I mean, anyone can invest money. The object of the aim is to invest money wisely. Now, they've put, they put a commercial venture into the region that has uh, some far-reaching effects for the region, and if you want to then index yourself to that region in a way that brings you a great relationship with it, buying a football club that's so synonymous with it might be a useful addition to your portfolio. It may well also be an expensive one. But if you've got the, the ability to do the deal and you see the end game of Coventry being able to get out of the championship, they've got a very good manager down there now, they're in better nick than they've been for some time. Yeah, yeah. yeah Mark I was Robbins, speaking to him this morning. You know, and they're 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 a far better condition than they've been for some time. Yeah. Sisu have had it for a long time. Their original punt of thinking they can get Coventry back into the Premier League in a season has not paid well for them. Um, but I think if this guy, very much like Gary Hoffman, was um, involved yeah. like, back in the day with wanting to do a deal on Coventry some time ago. Um, uh, people that are indigenous to the region that understand it and have a vested interest in it wanting to be successful for multiple of reasons is not a bad shout. Well, I think this is one of them, Simon, because they'd end up playing football in their own city at last. No, yeah. no longer nomadic Coventry City. I mean, King is saying, we know fans and others across the region want long-term security and the guarantee of playing football in our city. It's yeah. critical to what we're going to do. We've made it a priority. One of the first acts as majority uh, of majority owners is to submit a bid to acquire the CBS arena so they know yeah. that's where they want to be. Well, yes, because... There's and a he'll own it. Well, there's a lot of opportunities there. It was always a strange one for me with Coventry. I, I can't remember if it was Mike McGinnity or Brian Richardson, whoever's responsible for moving them from Highfield Road and I think the last of a game at Highfield Road was against My Palace before we got promoted that season they beat us ironically and they, see, it would, you would have thought it would have opened up a massive opportunity for them they were going to get some money out of Highfield Road they were going to go into a stadium that was slightly bigger but it was a bit of a white elephant when you walked through the concourses of um, the, uh, the stadium at Coventry it was Jaguar <laughs> garages yeah. in there and things yeah. like that and I know yeah. that's what the way that these things are going but it seemed so out of kilter with what the club was trying to achieve then you've had wasps go in there and all that's gone on with wasps mm. and if these guys can economically reunite the club with the stadium at the same time as the plannings will be to redevelop that stadium with enabling which is retail probably some commercial property maybe a hotel maybe a cinema all that stuff which is right. going to in some respect or do a deal with Coventry Council, let them take it back for social housing, which I think was part and parcel of the equation, and rebuild another stadium. It's a, it's convoluted, but, but it's you, to be, it can be done. You 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 looked at the, the the plan to buy it. Why is it so tricky to buy the stadium? Um, because at that particular point, there was a you know wasps weren't the, the situation surrounding wasps and the reversion of the stadium to whomsoever it may have to go back to as a result of Watson's administration and what that looked like seemed more convoluted and because Coventry Council were in the mix and was wanting to do certain things with the stadium it made it it made me feel like I've got to bring a developer in with me I've got to do this with me and I thought this is not a straight line for me so I whilst Coventry would appeal to me as a football club it's a hard work deal economically I've got better things to be doing with my time and my money and trying to work out how to make a football club turn it into something economically viable. If Doug King and the model that he has with a business located 
in the town has a reason for doing it, yeah. then I hope that it makes commercial sense to him because it's one thing buying a football club. It's another thing having to deal with the with the ravenous beast that it is yeah. in terms of having to feed it all the time. Okay. Uh, David Smith is one of many saying, buy this, buy that. David saying, you're waiting for Hull, aren't you? I am most certainly not. And no. I'm also, buy Barnet, please, of Tony Cleanthos. I've known Tony Cleanthos for 25 years. I won't be buying anything of Tony. You're not going to buy Barnet? No. Nope. Uh, a lot of messages coming in. Buy us, buy that. But you're, you're still keen at some stage. If the deal's right, you would do it. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a bigger ambition and a likelihood to do something in boxing. But but football I've done. And whether I, whether I miss the opportunity to make half a billion quid, which is what Palace is now worth on the back of some of my work, that's for me to live with. Yeah. But there's no burning ambition, but you shouldn't waste knowledge. And if there's a right framework mm. to utilise it in, I would never turn my nose up at it, but it's not. I'm not sitting there going, I must... Because you know what? Owning a football club, Jim, is not all it's cracked up to be. It's no. tedious. No. You'll get blamed for everything, and you get to spend money on something that everyone blames you for the outcome. And when you get success, it's nothing to do with you. What do you want to do in boxing? Promotion. Am I looking at the new Frank Warren? Um, yeah, maybe you know, either either set up a boxing business, buy into a boxing business, um, or or buy someone's business. Okay, hold so on to your money for three. the time being, though, because you get to buy me dinner for a few nights in Qatar next week. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Friday mornings from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talksport.